Hello everybody, I'm Mike Mackey. I'm the owner of Premier Aquarium Service. This is my assistant, uh, Kenzie. Hello. Um, we thought we'd come uh, and talk. We've been getting some questions from clients, but also uh, um, just the general public about um, how the coronavirus and, and things associated with that might affect um, their aquariums. We thought it would be uh, um, good to try to address that, maybe have a little fun. Um, we thought we'd uh, call this segment um, Between Two Bio Orbs. Um, I don't know if some of you are familiar with the uh, Between Two Ferns, but uh, I think we're going to go with Bio Orbs for this. So, um, Kenzie's got the list of questions. We're going to go through uh, go through a few things. Um, if I don't get too long-winded, I thought we'd maybe take a real quick tour of the Aqua Design Studio here. Um, since we... Uh, um, we're currently uh, not having regular open showroom hours with the um, design studio, but we are available um, by appointment. Um, and we definitely are still continuing our service care um, for our clients. Um, being in the pet industry and also in the care, pet care part of the business, we're able to, um, we are considered essential. So our guys are willing to work and they really wanna make sure that um, we're still able to care for our in a very safely, in a safe manner, but able to care for our clients' pets and also make sure that we're able to keep their aquariums healthy and operating properly. So with that, uh, Ken's, if you want to start uh, some of the questions and we can talk about them and, and kind of go get through this list. Okay, so the first question we have gotten is, what will be the effect on the fish industry long-term with the coronavirus? So especially, I mean, I just addressed a little bit with us as far as um, we're still going to be performing aquarium service. We're working really close with our clients. If they um, have limited access or no access, we're walking them through what needs to be done to maintain their aquarium through this um, period. But as far as the industry, um, I've heard that a number of the uh, local fish stores are still providing, um, are, may still have some open hours. I think they also are do fall in that essential uh, category as well. But um, I know uh, I've heard also some of them are gonna have uh, door side service. So if you're not a client of ours, but you still need pr um, uh, product for your aquarium, I highly encourage that you um, support the local fish stores. Um, I think everyone, every business out there, um, especially the small businesses, this decrease in revenue is really going to affect the bottom line. So if you can take a little bit of uh, time to really uh, um, support the local fish stores, I think it would go a really long way. Plus, you know, if you're doing a uh, um, ordering things online, I think uh, there's obviously delays in shipping right now. So even a, even another reason to uh, support your local fish stores and really help to make sure that they survive this and that they're going to be available um, so people, so you have an outlet here once we, once we as a nation get through this. But as far as the industry goes, it is interesting, um, you know, you don't think about it, you kind of think about going to the store or in our case, the fish just show up at your house, but there's a, a huge logistical um, supply chain that for the fish to come from their countries of origin or their breeding facilities through the wholesalers and all of those types of things. So that's definitely been um, greatly disrupted. Um, I could easily see uh, a good month or two here um, where we may have some issues getting stock at least um, as much as we would normally get. Um, so there's, there's definitely gonna be interruptions. I would say um, stocking up on foods, things like uh, if you use purified water that you're purchasing, having an extra five or 10 gallons on hand is a great idea. We've been trying to do that with our clients, um, leaving them extra water, just in case if something really happened where we would not be able to get out, we can definitely um, take care of that for our clients. But I think overall the industry will definitely survive. Um, same, you know, same with our economy and the country and everything else, but it's definitely gonna be um, disrupted for a while. Okay, great answer. So. <laughs> the next question is, can my fish get sick? I have gotten a few people have asked about that. I mean, the fish are definitely still um, susceptible to the normal 
diseases that they might get, especially if you've gotten anything new. Um, I think one of the things we've done as a company in the past is we've always believed in quarantine our fish for 14 days. Well, we're seeing that uh, uh, a quarantine is actually good for, for everybody if, um, if you're you know, potentially been exposed to disease. So um, yeah, the fish definitely cannot get coronavirus, so that's good. Um, they still are susceptible to a number of different diseases and things, but if you're not introducing new livestock, um, the odds of their, your fish getting sick if they're healthy right now would be pretty remote, but you do still want to monitor water chemistry and things like that. Okay, so the next question is, you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but what to do if someone is running low on fish food? So the first thing would be, you know, if you can, if you're not, again, if you're a client of ours, it's no problem. You call or text your service person or the office and we will have uh, the supplies you need, whether it be foods, water, you know, if you have a uh, emergency issue with a pump going out or anything like that, we're definitely there to still um, continue to support our clients and be a, you know, a partner for our clients. Um, but I guess the, the other thing with that would be, you know, again, try to support your local, the local fish shops, make sure you're, you know, the food won't go bad, buy a few extra packages of it, um, make sure you have enough on hand, that especially the dry food can last years if it's not exposed to heat or moisture. So um, that would really be my main advice is make sure you're stocked up on the essentials. Um, it's not a bad idea to have uh, um, some extra equipment you know, you don't think about things like that, but um, especially if, again, if you're a, a hobbyist and you, you might be cut off from local uh, stores, usually whatever the main drive pump for your aquarium, it's great to have a backup for that. And then also heaters. Heaters are notorious for um, being the most unreliable piece of equipment on your aquarium, so it's always nice to have an extra one on hand of those if you had something go out. Because I always say, mercy. Murphy's fish law is that definitely, uh, you know, if it is going to go out, it's going to be on, you know, 12 at night on a Friday and maybe the stores aren't open. So a little bit of um, preventive, pre uh, preventiveness is a great way to, uh, you know, make sure that you're not going to have issues with um, when equipment does fail on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is, is it safe to turn off the tank or what should I do about the power? So that's a great question because um, we actually had something like this come up where uh, business did have to uh, um, shut down its, at least their regular operations and accidentally the power was shut off for the aquarium. Fortunately, that um, the duration between the power going off and our service person being out there um, for their regular service call was short enough that we didn't lose any fish, but the fish still re are definitely going to be required to have... Uh, power on the aquarium. We want to make sure that their life support, um, including the pumps and the heaters, are operating properly. You can definitely, if you'd like, um, if you're going to be isolated from the aquarium for a while, if you do not have animals that are light dependent, either plants or corals, you can turn the light off. That will slow the fishes, um, just their activity down a little bit, but also will help keep the aquarium clean. Um, so when you are able to uh, access the aquarium, you're not walking into a, a total disaster with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question on the list is what to do if my fish is sick? Well, I think um, you just definitely would want to uh, evaluate what's happening with the fish. Again, if it's a customer of ours, we would want to stop out, uh, make sure, you know, uh, take a look at the fish, make sure the water chemistry is good. That's always a good um um, underlying cause for a lot of fish diseases. Um, a lot of times that causes stress. Again, look at us with um, our immunity, how, how important uh, stress is. If the more stressed we are, the more vulnerable we are to disease, especially, uh, and fish are no different or any animals. So it's good to make sure that they're, they're doing their best. And then um, depending on what, what the ailment would be with the fish, you just would wanna make sure to treat it with the proper medication. Um, again, most, most of the fish stores, because they are going to be staying open, would be a great resource for that. And then obviously for our clients, we would come out and uh, get the tank properly treated. Okay. So the next question is, what to do if the tank is low on water? 
So that's going to probably be the biggest, especially if you don't have access to the aquarium. Um, between that and the feeding of the fish is going to be the, the, the two biggest hurdles that you might run into. Um, we made a little uh, video clip that is on our Facebook page um, showing how to add water. But really, um, it's not too difficult. If your aquarium does not have a, uh, a sump system, typically then you would just add the water directly to the aquarium. Um, obviously you don't fill it so the water comes out the top, that would be too full. Um, as far as the, uh, if you do have a sump system, which most of our clients would have that, um, typically you'd want to keep the sump a third to half at the most full of water. Our systems usually have, will have a mark on them showing what the maximum amount of water you would want in that filter would be. Um, but I'd refer you back to the video. If that doesn't give you the information that you need, um, feel free to call us on our office line and we're happy to walk people through or troubleshoot things even if you're not a, a regular client. Um, we want people to, uh, if, uh, we want to be able to help as much as we possibly can and this is the area that we know and we're happy to help. Okay, so the next question is what to do if there's an issue with equipment? Again, the biggest thing with that is going to be um, depending on what would fail, you know, some things are, if it's an uh, extra uh, pump or something that isn't totally life essential to the aquarium, I'm sure it would be fine until you would have access to that equipment. The biggest things you want to watch for are the main pumps on or filters on the aquarium. You need to make sure that those are functioning properly or running. Um, the heaters. You know, typically heaters don't run a lot, but they do help, especially in our climate. We're getting into that time of the year where temperatures can fluctuate. That's where heaters are really the most important. We don't, we want to keep that temperature as stable as possible for the fish. Um, you know, and if, if, if equipment does fail, you know, local fish stores are a great resource. If you really get in a jam, um, we, we do not sell retail to the general public, but I mean, I, I'm, as a fish person and someone that is just a hobbyist in general, I'm sure we could figure out a way to really help somebody out. But I, I again, I would really refer back to uh, going out to the local fish shops. Um, and then certainly, obviously, if you're a client, I mean, we, between our vehicles, but also here at the shop, we have every product that we would need to um, be able to get any of our clients by if they had an equipment failure. Okay. So the next one is what to do if I get sick and cannot care for my tank? So that's a, that's a really good question. Obviously, everyone you know, that has an aquarium really enjoys and loves their fish and it, it definitely becomes a part of your family as far as, like, as many, like many of your other pets. But the big thing is you need to make sure that your health is first um, is, is taken care of and that you're doing the things that are proper. Um, and then beyond that, you know, you may want to rely on, uh, you know, depending on this, your like quarantine situation, if you are sick, you know, someone else in the family may be able to do the basic things. Really a lot of the things can be um, let go for a little bit. You know, it, the, the tank will function for quite a while you know, getting minimal amounts of food into the aquarium, making sure that it has water. Also, uh, you know, if, if people are going to feed, especially if someone's cut, like feeding for you, we see that quite often um, when people go on vacation. If they don't have an auto feeder on the aquarium, um, we really recommend that if you have someone covering or feeding for you, that you set aside portions of food or really give them good instructions how much to feed. Uh, at an overfed aquarium, um, is much a much bigger problem because it can really pollute the water chemistry than it, uh, than your fish getting a little less food here or there. Mm -hmm. They will survive. I mean, most of these fish, even if they weren't fed for a week or two, I, I certainly wouldn't like recommend that. But to be honest, if that even happened, they would they would survive it. I mean, fish really have um, really a high resilience to. You know, you think a lot of times in the wild, they can go through long periods and not get food, whether it's weather related, floods, anything like that, so. Okay, sounds good. So our last question is, what is Premier doing and what can they do during these times? So I alluded to it a little bit at the beginning, but the biggest thing is 
we're going to continue to function as normal as far as our service. Um, we do have uh, clients, um, you know, rain in a wide range of businesses, but also residential clients. We are working closely with them, obviously, as everyone's done, and, and we really have ramped up our, you know, the making sure all of our precautions to make sure that that um, we're doing everything from checking our temperatures daily to. You know, obviously, all the sanitation, cleaning equipment, all those types of things. The biggest thing, if you are a client and you have um, shown any symptoms, we would want you to let us know that ahead of time. And those people that we have had that happen, we've just um, re been able to reschedule, um, walk them through the things that do need to be done on the aquarium, and we haven't any problems with that. This time of the year is also nice, though. Uh, we do a lot of pond clean out, so it's getting to be that time as well. So we'll be able to have very um, good social distancing because a lot of times that's just a, a one or two man crew or two person crew and uh, you're not wor working um, close to one another and you're outside and you get to uh, experience a little bit of mother nature as well. So um, that will be something that we'll really be ramping up here in the spring. We've got a number of installs coming up that we're really excited about. Um, a bunch of uh, construction projects um, um, from ranging from senior care facilities to other businesses, um, a number of really cool residential product or projects coming up. So it, it's definitely going to be exciting um, and we're looking forward to hopefully uh, things getting back to normal as quick as possible and, and we'll, be, we'll be here and be ready for everyone and what they need. So now we'd like to say thank you to everyone who is watching right now at home. Yeah, definitely a huge thank you. Um, I know our production value is, isn't the highest, but uh, we thought we'd have a little fun with it, but also, you know, try to share some information. Um, the big thing would be if you have questions that we did not address, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to us, um, even if you're not an existing client. Um, I mean, we want to make sure that everyone gets through this. Our office line is listed a number of things from our from our website to our Facebook page to Instagram, but that number is 612-243-1333. Uh, and um, for our clients, someone's always on call 24 hours a day. Um, if you leave a message, we can certainly uh, get back to you um, the next business day if you're not a regular client. Um, and, and also, we just also wanna thank, you know, from our clients, our clients have been amazing. Um, we're really blessed as a company to have the, the clients that we do, you know, from the encouraging words they've given us, um, some that we haven't got in, you know, they've, they've also, you know, they understand as a small business and they're like, we still want to keep paying you, we just want to make sure that, you know, you get through this and, and just those kind of sediments are really nice and it's, it's a great feeling knowing that your work's appreciated. The other thing with what we do, we, we work with a lot of um, healthcare providers senior care providers, you know, people that are really on the front line of this. Um, and they really are truly amazing and the sacrifices that they're making, um, you know, exposing them potentially themselves or their families. Um, that's it. We have a huge thank you to them. But also there's, you start to realize like how interwoven our society is and it's not just them, it's the truckers supplying them and the people in at the gas stations and the grocery stores and and just everybody that's still continuing to work and you know and, and, and do the things that we need to do to function as uh, as we go through a I mean a, a huge national crisis in this case so it's really really amazing and you know I think you go through this with gratitude you know appreciate the little things and people will get through it and, and we'll be here as a support at least and, and be as certainly of help if it relates to uh, to your aquariums so I think that's it but uh, hopefully if people aren't bored to death I don't even know if we who's watching if we have anybody watching we have 10 viewers. but I thought what we do is a is a <laughs> real quick uh, little walkthrough of the design studio um, to be honest since we're not having regular open hours I don't know what to expect I, I haven't really went through the, the studio too much so we might have a little a few maintenance things that need to be addressed but um, we, uh, we've got a full crew and ready to do that. So I think I'll come over, grab the camera, do a little quick, uh, maybe a one minute uh, walk through and, and we'll call it a, a great Friday night. 
All right, so I don't know if you've ever. So here we are. Um, this is the front of the design studio when you had come in. Um, this is Coach. He's our uh, famous uh, bobblehead that we got, almost um, life size, or well, child size, I guess, large child size. But the uh, um, the design studio, we've just got different things here on display. We've got this really cool 240 gallon um, curve front tank. Um, you know, our famous uh, piranha tree tank that we've still got. Everyone asks if we uh, if we do piranhas. Well, we certainly can. Um, they don't always make the ideal pet for everyone, but for those that do, they can definitely a unique animal. Um, we've got our uh, Red Sea here. We're restocking it. Um, recently uh, kind of started to revamp it. Um, we've got our 450 gallon freshwater display. Oh, we've got this guy, our Fly River Turtle. You gotta love this guy. Oh, everyone, when they come in, they always ask about him. Definitely a lot of fun. Got the parrot cichlids going. Some big giant bala sharks. Looks like we might be getting a little bit of glare, so I apologize about that. We've got our uh, turtle display here. Got some archer fish. They keep uh, messing up the glass. Oh, look at this little baby guy. How can you know? Oh, he's dealing with the current there. You gotta love it. We've got our refresh um, system. Definitely very popular. Really, really like this. Um, people look for the really bright color that you might get with the decorations in a, uh, a saltwater fish only aquarium. Um, but they want to do uh, freshwater fish. So we do a lot of times with these African cichlids. Really a nice um, compromise. Those fish are a lot of fun, have a lot of babies. Sorry, a few lights are off as the uh, timers are out and we're kind of extra outside of our normal hours. Just got in this really cool uh, ritter eye anemone. When it opens up, it's going to be huge. Been hearing that a lot lately, but definitely it's going to be huge. Um, this is going to be a feature coming up soon. Um, Ian was able to put this together and we have uh, some video in production. These, uh, the bio, I always want to say biopod, but the bio orb airs are really, really going to be, I mean, they're going to be very popular. I can't wait till uh, we start getting these into clients. Um, they're going to love it. Then we've got this really, I love this display. We've got this planted aquarium. We've got this plant wall above it. I mean, talk about a showpiece. Imagine that in your uh, business or your house incredible got our co2 here on display i'll go into uh the vault our fish room here just give a real quick tour i think actually most of the lights are off but we've got a lot of stock just got in over uh 75 corals today we've got our cichlids holding system we've got a new tank um, going in over here we've got all of our quarantine here we this is where we've been quarantining them. We always do at least a 14-day quarantine on all of our fish. Um, you know, we have everything from, you know, nice emperor here, just different stuff, different butterflies and tanks. Um, French angel, powder blue, just a lot of different stuff here. Look at all these cichlids. Um, Again, I apologize, the lights are off. You know, we've got purple tangs, gem tangs, giant flame angels, you know, from regular Ocellaris to all the designer clowns. Got this, this big boy, got a nice clown trigger that came in. Definitely a lot of stuff going on here. But basically, over, I mean, in summary, we just want to make sure that, uh, everyone realizes that um, you know that we want to make sure that we're here to support our clients I mean we really look at all this as a real true partnership and we want to be there um, if you have any problems we're ready to help but the you know and also though if you're not a client um, if you need some help and we're able to help you we're happy to do that or also you know if you know anyone that needs help um, 
we're, we're actively not taking clients at this time, but we are getting a list together once we can kind of get everything back to normal. We definitely are taking installs and getting things lined up because we are ready to go and um, all of us are gonna stay and be here and be ready. Um, love this when the lights are uh, ramping down. Probably one of my favorite ways to look at, at these reef tanks. So, so in summary, thank you very much. It's been great. Um, Definitely call us if you have questions, and uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Take care.